Well, everybody, welcome to Infamous Interviews. Tonight we have Sandy Johnson joining us, and thank you, Sandy, for joining us. And you've had a really interesting career because I see you're really active on your social media sites you have now. And when you first started off, of course, you played Judith Myers in the now ultra-famous Halloween. And then you were in Gas Pump Girls and a few others in the 80s. So when you were first handed the script of Halloween, how did it take you, like, what spoke out to you about the script? Um, well... I didn't really get to see the whole script. All I really saw was just a few lines from each female part. So it was hard to get a real feel for it. Um, although I did like the Judith role because it was, was kind of playful in the beginning and it was the very first scene. So that's kind of fun. So yeah. Um, I, like I said, I didn't get to see the whole script. I actually didn't know the whole story about Michael as he grows up until I saw the film. And how was that your first experience with that? Because that had to be something with you not being able to read the full script and you seeing the final film on screen. <laughs> yeah, it was terrifying, actually. <laughs> I had no idea that uh, my murderous little brother was going to grow up and become a serial killer and be very scary so yeah the, i i thought that the movie was really good and really scary right and you know this was when john carpenter was first starting out of course like nobody really knew him and he dark star i guess was a little bit before halloween maybe or maybe a little bit after halloween but when he imposed you how did that meeting go it went fine. It was uh, it was a group meeting. There were some other people there. I believe Deborah Hill and and maybe some other of his friends. And he just had me read several different parts. He had me scream, and then uh, he said, "Okay, well, thank you very much." And I said, "All right, well, thank you." And then a couple of days later, I got a call from my agent who said I had been cast as Judith Myers. Right, and now this is a part that still gets mentioned in, it seems like, every new Halloween movie that gets released. So how does that make you feel that your character is still really talked about on, you know, an important basis of Michael Myers' psyche and that, you know, new generations of kids or teenagers get introduced to Judith Myers with every reboot or sequel that still comes out? Right. It's, a, it's amazing, really. At the time when I did it, I had no idea that it was going to be such an iconic role. But as it turns out, uh, it was his first kill of many. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, she has uh, kind of continued through history. And I'm actually very proud to, the, to be the actress that uh, got to have that role. It's amazing. And I'm, I'm happy. Right, and I brought up Gas Pump Girls a little bit before, so how were you brought into that project as well? Because it seemed like very early on, you had a lot of projects back to back to back, so was that kind of a big deal for you back then? I was, um, I was in Playboy in 1974, and I was with the Playboy agency, so a lot of the B-movies that had nudity, I was on the list <laughs> to call list. And so I think that's probably why I got several uh, during that time period. And they, they were all a lot of fun. I had, I had a lot of fun shooting Gas Pump Girls. It's probably my favorite next to Halloween. Uh, it's, it's just a fun movie. And it had Kirsten Baker from uh, uh, Friday the 13th Part 2. So just, just fun stuff. Right. And, you know, you mentioned you were a model. So how did you begin modeling and how did that uh, pursuement, I guess, of that career take place? Well, I was always interested in modeling from the time I was a little girl, uh, modeling and dancing. So I had started when I was probably seven or eight. When I was in uh, junior high, my uh, dad gave me the gift of going to uh, 
a modeling school. And so I went to, I went to modeling school. I did some uh, ramp modeling, photographic modeling, a lot of clothes. And then uh, when my father became very ill, he, he needed money for cancer treatment. And I had a friend suggest that I apply to Playboy. And so I did. And I was accepted as uh, Miss June 1974. And of course, once I did that, then I had many more modeling jobs and uh, films as well. And how was it like working with the Playboy magazine and uh, Hugh Hefner at that time? Because that had to be kind of overwhelming around that time when they were really popular, right? It was a very exciting, actually, for me. I was a country girl, uh, <laughs> raised, born and raised, uh, for the most part, in Texas, and then went to California around middle school. So I had only been in California a few years, so it was a very exciting time for me. It involved travel and store openings and visiting uh, the mansion, both in uh, California and Chicago, I, it was just conventions. I mean, it was it was great. It was a lot of fun. I met a lot of great people and, and a lot of opportunities opened up because of it. What were probably some of the most entertaining or some of the favorite people you met around that era? Modeling. Mm, wow. Uh, well, of course, Hugh Hefner. He <laughs> was... Right. Um, he was always nice to me and he had a beautiful home. He had a zoo uh, at his house. He had a wonderful pool and lots of great parties. So that was a, that was a great perk <laughs> for a young girl. Um, gosh, I, I don't know. I guess, of course, John Carpenter at the time, okay. I didn't realize it, but I enjoyed working with him. I didn't know he was going to become one of the greatest directors, but I feel very lucky now that I, uh, worked with him as well as Deborah Hill. So yeah, I guess um, those are probably two of the, the people that I was lucky to have met. Right. And are you still interested in acting? Because I see, you know, you're still active on Facebook, which I see you post on a lot. But are you still interested in acting as a career? I am. I took a, a long vacation, <laughs> we might say, about 40 years, and uh, got all my teaching and kids and all those things behind me. And when my agent found me and wanted me to start doing cons, and uh, I started thinking about films again. So I now have, I've done two uh, cameos in two films, and I also have about four or five more films lined up. To do so, I'm working on those scripts now, and hope to have them uh, at least a couple of them shot later this year. So, yeah, I'm very excited to be back in the film industry, and I'm thankful for the directors who are giving me a shot. Right, and you know, like we said, you've been in movies since Halloween, and you've seen the Grindhouse era and the Drive-In era when it was really popular. And now with a lot of social media filmmakers are now in this new wave, it's kind of almost like a new grindhouse era for these independent filmmakers trying to burst out on the scene. Have you noticed that at all with these filmmakers that offer you, you know, uh, characters to play in their movies as well? Like this is the new kind of drive in grindhouse era that you kind of pioneered with Halloween and Gas Pump Girls as well. Right. Yeah, I do. I do kind of feel that. And instead of the the B um, sexual kind of movies, it's more now it's getting into more where it's just horror, cranking right. out a lot of horror movies. But um, again, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of quality mixed into that. So I think there are going to be some very good directors that actually come out of this, just as there was uh, with John Carpenter. So I'm excited to work with some of them and, and you know, see what happens. Yeah, and uh, you've seen the evolution of movie going evolve with all these different formats and different sound scopes, right? With, you know, IMAX, 40X, and Dolby Cinema now with Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. How do 
do you still go to theaters yourself in these different formats to get a feel of what they look like now versus way back then when there wasn't as many formats in theaters? Right. I don't actually go to the movies very often. I'm super busy all the time, but <laughs> right. I certainly have been uh, to films in the last few years to, to see how amazing they are. I mean, it's like you're, it's like you're there. Uh, it used to be, it was like you were watching a movie. Now it's like you're kind of in the movie. It's very, very realistic and very high quality. So that's, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how much more realistic they can get unless they can reach out and touch you. <laughs> right, <laughs> so like there's going to be a new version of Smello Vision coming out. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Sandy, do you have any other projects that you have currently? You touched on them a little bit, but could you give a little bit more information on, on the ones that you have pending if you can? Okay. I have, um, let's see, I have one in that's going to be shot in Florida. It's called The Executioner. And I am a uh, psych psychologist working with a, um, uh, with a person who, let's just say, they've had a traumatic life. So <laughs> I'm very excited about that one. It's a nice part. And I, I can... Uh, I can see myself doing some things with it. I'm also possibly going to do one in New Zealand. So I'm excited about that option. And also another one in uh, United Kingdom called uh, G uh, Creeps at the Gym. And again, it's a nice part. <laughs> and so I also did the, uh, I did some vocals for that one. So that was that was fun. When I was in UK last summer, I um, got to do go to the sound studio and do some vocals for the film, which was awesome. Oh, that sounds very fun doing that in the UK as well. Yes, it was. It was. And then I, I did uh, For the Love of Horror Con while I was there, which was a blast. I met so many nice people. Uh, the people from UK were just awesome. The fans were fabulous. So I, I hope I get to go back again. And of right. course, the country was amazing. Right. And so talking about the UK, what were some of your probably favorite places that you've gotten to film over the over your career? Ooh, well, um, certainly on the beach. I did uh, right, a lot of my Playboy stuff was on the beach, and I'm a beach baby, so <laughs> that was <laughs> always a favorite. Um, we did some stuff at the Playboy Mansion, which is beautiful. We did some in Chicago, also very cool, on the lake. So let's see. We did some in the desert. That was, that was cool. Desert's beautiful. So those were probably my favorites in the U.S., but hopefully I'll get to do some cool stuff in the U.K. and New Zealand as well, and I'm sure they will become my new favorites. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sandy, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been really fun, and thank you again. You are so welcome. Thank you for having me.